smack him in the back of the head. Yeah, that may be having some medical problems over Just there when he gets the doctor checked. Please welcome to the blue corner for your next fight, Juan Maltos. Yeah, something to keep an eye on because we get our first look at the judges for tonight for the remaining 19 fights potentially. Juan Maltos, two and two record. Third time inside the Fury amateur cage. One and one so far. Coming off a loss to Armando Zuniga at FC 58 last year in February. And that loss looks really good in my opinion. Taking the Zuniga, or excuse me, Zuniga to the distance looks really good. We've seen what Armando Zuniga has done in his career since that moment as well. Now trying to move this record above 500 is Juan Pablo. Yeah, one Mako has got the pigtails going on in his hair. Looks a little bit savage. Where do you get a haircut like that, Alex? I haven't had a haircut in so long. Me neither. Yeah. <laughs> Shoot my own head. All right, let's meet his opponent. Please welcome to the red corner, Sean Cantu. You hear that nice cheer for Sean and Cantu straight here at Ohana Academy, fighting out of Czech, uh, San Antonio. Second time inside the Fury amateur cage, but hasn't fought since 2019. He has been rolling a lot, is a purple belt at Ohana. Competes in sub, uh, Submission Hunter Pro events as well here for Garcia Promotions. And Michael, we were talking earlier today, He's just a tricky a grappler. That's the best way to describe it. Yeah, we saw some tricky, tricky grappling in our first match. Uh, some that was against the rules, but here you're gonna you're gonna see Sean Cantu, you know, good purple belt, very very tricky submission artist. Uh, you know, we and of course Alex, we know how that can go in jiu-jitsu, and it's very very different. Those belts go away, those tricks go away when people are punching you in the face. Oh yeah, and just even the pacing of MMA grappling to jiu-jitsu is so different. Guys are so focused on staying on top. They don't really care about being in a guard. I mean, it definitely is different. Our tail of the tape brought to you by Sheath Underwear. See that height advantage for Mosos, as well as that slight reach advantage for the 22-year-old. Came in at 139.2 pounds. Although I think that was an error because it's 134 on our sheet. So both guys did clear and make weight. Let's go inside for our official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest brought to you by SheathUnderwear.com is scheduled for three rounds in the Fury Amateur Series Bantamweight Division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. This freestyle fighter stands five feet, eight inches tall, and he weighed in at 134.2 pounds. Fighting out of San Antonio, Texas, he holds an amateur record of two wins, two losses. This is Juan Maltos. And introducing his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. This mixed martial artist stands five feet, five inches tall, and he weighed in at a perfect 135 pounds. Also fighting out of San Antonio, Texas. Tonight, he looks for his first win as an amateur. This is Sean Cantu. Your referee in charge, Joel Ojeda. The always perfect beard of Joel Ojeda. Blue gloves for Maltos, red for Cantu. Nice, good Ooh. movement for Maltos. Nice little stick on a one-two. Didn't take long to get to make Sean take a shot. A well-timed double, got his hands together. Did a good job keeping his opponent's knees pinned together. Just taking his base away. Oh. He had a few different options on how to yeah. finish that double leg. Yeah, that was that looked like it was about to be a devastating. I thought he was yeah. going to throw him out of the cage. <laughs> All of a sudden, he lightly laid him down. He maybe didn't expect to get him up so high. <laughs> Cantu on top now in half guard. Yeah, good pressure from the top. Oh, easy little pass to mount. Yeah, and decided to step over and try to get to the other side. Maybe that was his strong side. And uh, ended up at half guard on the other side now. 
Malto's trying to keep trying to keep that underhook. I don't know if I suggest that from the bottom. Uh, if you're flat on your back, if you're if you want that underhook, of course. If you're trying to control the posture, or if you're on your hip a little bit, but it does kind of keep you there if you're if you're on your back. The 22-year-old Juan Maltos has been taking about a fight a year. Would like to see him get a little bit more action, but at 22, got a lot of time still. Hopefully, good transition. Oh, nice. Now in a world of trouble is Maltos. Can Sean Cantu continue the onslaught? Ooh, Cantu in the mound here. Raining down some punches, holding him down. Oh, oh, Those are big shots. Oh, he's not going to let this last much longer. I can't believe he let it last this long. Will this be enough? Oh man, if Sean had just thrown two or three more punches, they'd have called it right there. Maltos was pinned, he's pinned again. So that's where your coach, that's where your coach has got to come in and be like, five more and it's out. Yeah, they should be screaming at him frantically. He's got his, his under the chin, here's that rear naked choke, locked oh, in. Oh, you know, now turns away from it, does Maltos, but still taking a lot of damage right now. Is there gonna be any kind of defense from the bottom? 20 seconds to work to get this finish in this dominant position. It's been all Cantu. Yeah, Cantu needs to finish this fight in the first round. He's thrown so many punches. Oh, oh man. wow. <laughs> I mean, that's arguably a 10 round. Oh, for sure. That has to be a 10 8 round. What was the significant punch count? 200 to 3, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it had to be. It was crazy. You know, after that first flurry, we'll look at it here in a second. The rest of those punches weren't, they, they weren't connecting that hard. So probably not that much damage taken from Maltos, but let's take a look at it and see. The replay will tell us the truth. I mean, there must have been four or five punches from that that we heard. I mean, yeah. You can tell Maltos' head had nowhere to go. So we hear fist to skull to canvas. Yeah. yeah right this here. is that onslaught. That, yep. that was rough. Yeah, and then after oh. he turns his head, you get four or five more right there. I thought he was going to stop it right there, but he started missing and then he stopped. Yeah. And, and then I the think, punches got lighter, right? Yeah, I think that's what I think that's what got him. I think that's I think he was there. I think, like you said, I was one or two punches from that fight being stopped. Mm. I mean, he really was. The ref was looking at him too. Yeah, good for Joel for letting him go, though. They typically do not let amateurs go that long. And one thing to notice, Maltos didn't have much of an answer at all for bottom now. Well, he put himself in top now, but it's just instant reverse. Yep. You can tell the difference in these guys' ground skills is just tremendously. You know, adverse. You see Sean already looking to pass, keeping good pressure on his hips. I mean, pinching the guy's leg in between mm -hmm. his legs pretty easily passes. Kind of using a leg drag. Yeah, right back to mount. Yeah, this is where he wants beautiful. to go. I mean, All getting, right. getting him out should not be that easy. Yeah, let's see if we can get another run at this. And that is it. That is enough. We have ourselves a <laughs> finish. Sean Cantu gets his first win as an amateur. <laughs> it's just, yeah, what, a lot of mountain that fight. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, a lot of mountain, a lot of mountain punches thrown. And in both rounds, Cantu took one punch and he said, that's enough. Got the fight back to the ground in this case. It almost looks like he pulled right and got pulled himself, and he got mounted himself. Reversed it immediately, like you said, I. Got to the mound, fight was over. It only took four or five punches this time from the top. Yeah, good work on the ref. I think he acknowledged that Maltos wasn't going anywhere. We're gonna see two more minutes of this. It was a good stop. I wonder if that first round was kind of the back of the mind of Joe Ojeda, like, probably we should have been finished yeah. there anyways, <laughs> but you're right, like, why let him suffer more damage? It's an amateur fight. Juan Maltos still in a good mood. Like, he understands what happens. He's not arguing that stoppage by any means either. All right, let's go inside. Make this official. 
Ladies and gentlemen, referee Joel Ojeda calls for a stop to the action. 40 seconds into round number two, declaring a winner by TKO, Sean.